Hi! In this video, we're going to show a quick overview about Mystica workflows, focusing on the interface and building basic workflows as an example. So what is Mystica workflows? Mystica workflows is our first dedicated media management, transcoding, and delivery application. It's extremely easy to use, and it has been designed to be used by any industry professional. With Mystica workflows, you can automate many tasks, improving and accelerating your pipeline. So how can we build and manage those workflows? Let's take a look to the interface. The main core of Mystica workflows is the node graph. In this node graph, we can build our workflows using the nodes that we can find in this panel here. As you can see, there are three groups, input, tasks, and output. We can access to these nodes as well by right-clicking in the node graph. So let's build a basic workflow. I'm going to transform this div sequence that I have in this folder to ProRes, for example. To do that, I load a div node as an input and a ProRes node as a task. As you can see, the visual aspects of the nodes is very simple and intuitive. We have the connectors and the name of my clips on top. Next to it, we have this small circle. As you can see now, we have the TIV node in orange color and the progress node in red. As we can read here, orange means that it's not configured yet, and the red means that it's not connected. We can see more information related with these issues here in the validation inspector. If we select the TIV node, we see that it's telling us that we need to load something. We need to select the path of our media. If we click in the progress node, we get two messages. One, that is not connected, and two, that we need to load an output path. Okay, so let's load some media to our TIFF node. I'm going to come here to this folder and just load one frame. This is enough to load the whole sequence. Now my node has media. I can do the same thing by just loading the media in the node graph directly, and I will get the same result. Now I'm going to connect the TIFF node to the ProRes node and I'm going to drop this folder as the output folder. I can select the folder from here as well. Now is the moment to configure the progress node. I have all the parameters here, in my parameter panel. Just for keeping things simple, I'm going to change only the codec setting to progress high quality. Now we need to add this workflow to our queue for processing. So we go here, clicking up to queue, and now we click in the play button for starting the process. As you can see, once it's finished, we can just go to the output folder, and here we have the progress file. If we take a look to here, next to the queue, we have the overview panel, which is a very cool graphic feature that shows me all the workflows and all the nodes per workflow that I have in my project. So let's create a new workflow to make something different. As you can see, we have a new line in my overview panel. In this case, we're going to use a watch folder, which is a dynamic folder that is always watching any new input, starting the workflow every time that this happens. So we select the watcher node, and we're going to drop over the node the folder that we want to use for it. The main goal of this workflow is to create some H.265 files with the timecode born in and upload those files to an FTP or to an online folder for our client, for example. So we connect the output of the watcher node to the H.265 node. And at the end of the setting list, in the virtual slate field, I'm going to select clip name and timecode to burn that information over the clip. And now I'm going to set my output folder in a local folder. Then I'm going to connect a new node called copy. This node is going to copy the rendered media in the H265 node from my local folder and place it in my Google Drive folder to upload the file. Of course we can just set the Google Drive folder as my output folder in the render node, but let's say that for security reasons I prefer to have it first in local and then upload the file. Finally, we add this workflow to my queue. And now, if I copy something in my watch folder, 
Mystic automatically starts the process. Once it finished, now we see that we have the file in the selected local folder and in the Google Drive folder. And any time that I put something in the Watcher folder, Mystic Workflows will be watching to start the process automatically. As you can see, Mystic Workflows is really easy to use and very powerful as well. Those have been basic examples, but I hope now you can start to imagine many situations where a solution like this can be really helpful. In the following tutorials, you will find more examples, including integration with the rest of Mystica softwares. See you in the next video!